Numerical convergence can be a somewhat troubling issue in CPW. We have an entire chapter in our CPW engineering book on convergence. And in the essence of time, I won't take too much time to talk about convergence here. But I want to show you some highlight points as to how you can judge convergence. The issue is that the conductivity the conductivity is in this part of the solution. This is the unknown. This is the head that we want to compute at every node. It is the unknown. But our conductivity is a function of the head. And so we have a problem in that we don't know the head, so how can we define the conductivity? And as a result, we have the conductivity being, function, being a function of the very thing we want to compute. We are forced into a, an iterative procedure. So basically, we start with the saturated conductivity and then use the last computed value in the next iteration. It is a form of a repeated substitution. It is not entirely a free-for-all repeated substitution. There are some controls on it to limit, to limit the amount of variation in conductivity from iteration to iteration. But I won't take a lot of time here on those details. What I want to do here is to show you how to control the tolerance for convergence and to illustrate to you what it means if you do not have a converged solution. I will show to you the convergence tab under the key in analysis settings dialog box. There are several parameters by which we can control convergence. I will only talk about the second one here and that basically the effort is to try and de make sure that the conductivity corresponding to the most recently computed head corresponds to the conductivity on the function. And so the first control is how many iterations are we going to let the solution go. We always have to specify a number of iterations, otherwise we might find ourselves in an infinite loop and it may never stop. So it's always necessary to have a maximum number of iterations. Then we have a tolerance. In this case, it says what is the tolerance in orders of magnitude between the conductivity corresponding to the last computed head as opposed to the conductivity that would correspond to the value on the function. Then we have some other controls here, and this is the controls that uh, govern how much, how large a change in conductivity is allowed from uh, one iteration to the next. This parameter says that it is one-tenth of an order of magnitude is the amount that I'm going to allow the conductivity change from order from one iteration to the next. And when it oscillates, I will decrease it by a certain rate, and eventually I have to come to a minimum that I'm going to allow the conductivity to change from iteration to iteration. This is the minimum value. These default values that we give you for CPW are generally quite good, and uh, they lead to uh, solutions in most cases. Of course, the more steep the function, the more difficult to get convergence. So if this is the conductivity, and this is negative pore pressure, and our conductivity is extremely steep, we will have a lot of difficulty getting a converged solution. If the slope is somewhat flatter, 
we don't nearly have the same difficulty in getting a converged solution. So the question then arises, how can you tell that you have reached a converged solution? There are several ways in CPW to produce this graph. And on the left here, we see a non-converged solution. The conductivities that correspond, let me put it another way, the heads or the pressures that have been computed with a conductivity from the function are not the ones that fall back on the function. And as a result, when we see a lot of red points here that do not fall on the function, it is a signal that we have not converged to the correct solution. On the right-hand side, however, the conductivity that was used to compute the head is the conductivity that falls on the function, and as a result, that is a signal that we have reached a converged solution. Let us go to GeoStudio and illustrate some issues and illustrate how you can control the convergence and to particularly show you how to check the convergence in CPW. Let's go to GeoStudio then and open up SEP06. Browse SCP-06 and we this is our example with the core that we had looked at earlier. We have three analyses here. We're going to do, look at analysis number three where the core is has a saturated conductivity a hundred times less than the shell material. Going then to the Define view under key in analysis. There's a tab here, convergence. And we click on that tab, we see this dialog box which we saw in the PowerPoint presentation. So, what I'm going to do, just to illustrate the point, I am going to make the number of iterations, a small number, say 10, close, and let's save this file under a different name, file, save as, we'll save it as convergence. Now let us go to the solve dialog box and let's make sure that this is unchecked so that the solve window stays open. We do not want to check this so the solve window automatically closes. We'll run analysis number three and notice there's a message here that says maximum iterations reached solution may not have converged. What I want to draw your attention to is this graph button. And by default, we give you a graph of the hydraulic conductivity versus suction. And when you see red dots that do not fall on the function, that is a signal that we have not reached a converged solution. So this is one way to do it is to look at the graph in the solve window. A little later I will show you another way to look at the graph. If we look at the results, the results don't look all that bad in this particular case. However, many times the results are quite scattered. However, all we are doing here is illustrating the procedure and the technique and how to judge convergence. Let's go back to the define view under key and analysis, under convergence. Let's make it 100 iterations now. 
and reanalyze the problem, solve, save, solve analysis number three, and notice that in this particular case we did not get the message and this dialog box we have reached a zero here. The zero says that in every case at every Gauss region within the element we have used a conductivity to compute the head which is within the tolerance of the conductivity that we would get from the function. Again, if we create the graph, now we see that the blue, or sorry, the red results now fall in blue squares, and they are exactly on the function, and this is an indication of a converged solution. Now let us say that you had set up a fairly large problem and uh, that you wanted to allow the uh, solution to proceed without your attendance and later you come back and you want to check the convergence. Another way to do this is to go to the results view, say draw a graph, add a new graph, convergence, This time from the data is from convergence. Notice that we have to select convergence here. Select convergence and we want to plot K versus suction. We need material properties and we want to select versus matrix suction x conductivity versus matrix suction. And so you get the same form of the graph such that you can see the computed results as to how they related, relate to the specified function and if the computed results fall on the function it is an indication of a converged solution. So here is a procedure whereby you can so to speak check the convergence after the fact after the solution has been uh, has has completed and the calculations have completed. In summary then as I started out saying convergence in CPW can be somewhat troublesome at times due to the very steep functions that we deal with and the extreme nonlinearity in the solution and as a result, we encourage you to always, always check your convergence either in the solve dialog box or later on in contour and make sure that the computed solution matches the specified conductivity function. Once again, I would urge you to spend some more time in the CPW engineering book reading more details about convergence procedures when you have difficulty in your particular project.